Hi guys, my name is Chad Trofgerben. I am the founder and content creator for IncredibleTutorials.com. I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 9 tutorials. So let's get started. Anime Studio Pro allows you to adjust the project settings for every project you work on. This includes the dimensions for the document, the frame rate, background color, there are even layer rendering settings and 3D settings only available in the Pro version of Anime Studio. So let's check them out. First, go to File, Project Settings, or you can use Control Shift P if you're on Windows, Command Shift P if you're on a Mac. Now a window will appear giving you all sorts of different options. First, let's direct our attention to the Dimensions panel. Here we can adjust the size of our canvas, and this is useful because you can match your dimensions to whichever venue you plan to export your video for. For instance, if we click on this drop-down menu, you'll see that we have YouTube and YouTube HD options. So if you want to export for YouTube in an HD format, you may want to select the YouTube HD option that will then set you up so that your dimensions match that for a YouTube HD video. You of course have access to many more options, such as standard HD options, web options, iPhone, iPad, Droid, and so on. Also, you can click custom to enter in your own dimensions. There is a limit to this though, so if I put in, for instance, something outrageous like 90,000 by 90,000, and click OK, you'll see that the program snaps your dimensions back to a safe area. The maximum you can go as far as your dimensions are concerned for the width and height. You may have noticed when I adjusted the width a moment ago, the height adjusted along with it. And that is because I have constrained proportions currently checked. Basically, Anime Studio will try to keep your dimensions in proportion when this option is checked. So for instance, if I highlight height here and I type in 6000, and come up here to width, you can see that the width changes according to what I put in for height. Again, to keep things in proportion. Now, if you don't want this to occur, you simply deselect constraint proportions, and then you can enter in a value of your choice, and you can see now that it remains independent of each other, so that you can adjust each value according to however you want to adjust them. So that's just something to keep in mind when you are working on your projects in Anime Studio. Next, you can adjust the frame rate. Basically, the frame rate dictates how smooth your video will look. So if you have 24 frames per second, that means you have to animate 24 frames per second of footage. If you bump that up to, let's say, 60, that means then you have 60 frames per second of footage. So again, it will create a much more smoother looking video. Anime Studio usually defaults to 24 frames per second. You can choose the default start and end frame for your project. And this can be adjusted on the fly in the timeline as well. But if you want to set it up here so you have more frames to work with without having to adjust later on, you can do that right here. And your end frame can end wherever you want it to. There is no limit to how many frames you can have per project file in Anime Studio Pro. Coming over here to the background color, you can choose a default background color for your project. As you can see right now, we have an off-white color for the default, but you can choose any color you wish. You go down to red, click OK, and now, of course, you'll have a preview of what your background color will look like, and that will be applied once you click OK. Depth of field allows you to create a simulated depth of field look based on the distances of your layers in your project file. So if you've ever seen a film where you have a close-up of an actor and the background is blurry, that is depth of field. So if we enable this, we have some options we can choose from. The focus distance value is the distance from the camera to the perfect plane of focus. The focus range allows you to play within that range. You'll see something that's less or more blurry depending on where that object is. And the max blur radius allows you to adjust the blurriness that you'll find with things that are out of focus. Now as for the render styles, you have all sorts of different things you can do here. You can adjust the fill or stroke of the objects you have drawn in Anime Studio. 
or you can affect the layers entirely. So for instance, if you click the drop down menu by the fill style section, you have access to normal, none, background, back transparent, and so on. So if we select one of these, you'll see a preview below that will give you an idea of what this is gonna look like. So that's what crayon will look like if you choose that for the fill style. Now, if we go to stroke style and choose something like pen, you can see that the lines get darker, giving you a different style. And if I just go back to normal here for both of these. Now, if we choose layer style, you have two options. So if we choose, let's say the cutout style, you can see it looks like all of the objects look like they were cut out as if they were pieces of paper. So you have some options there to play with that can give you some different looks to your cartoon if you wish. And when using these styles, you'll want to consider the minimize frame to frame randomness. Basically, if you have this unchecked, you'll get a flicker effect with these effects. The line types, the fill types may change slightly frame to frame depending on the style you have chosen. If you check this, Anime Studio will minimize that effect, making things look a lot more smooth or solid. It really depends on your frame rate and what type of style you are shooting for. Moving on now to sort layers by depth. If you check this, your layers will be sorted by how they appear on the z-axis that you assign with the move layer tool. So instead of arranging your layers on the layer panel, they will be assigned based on the distance from the camera. Sort by true distance goes by the layer's origin as opposed to the distance from the camera. And noise grain allows you to create some noise for your animation, meaning it gets a grainy looking effect. This is a popular technique used in film and it can make things look a little bit more realistic, but depending on how you compress your video, things might look a little bit muddy. So you may want to apply just a slight grain and see how it works and then decide from there if you want to apply that effect to your project. Stereo rendering allows you to create a 3D effect. The red-blue setting will create red and blue images for your animation so that you'll need special 3D glasses to view the 3D effect. Side-by-side -side is used in YouTube quite a bit and it creates two images of your animation side-by-side -side to give off the 3D effect. Cross-side is the same as side-by-side -side, except the left and right sides are flipped. And if you choose to do any of those, you can adjust the eye separation. In other words, you can adjust how far apart the images appear using the 3D effect. Extra SWF frame gives you an extra frame of blank animation at the end of your video. And finally, if you like everything that you've done here and you want to use these settings in future project files, you can click the Save as Defaults button. This will default everything so that the next time you create a new project file, your dimensions, background color, and everything else will be set to how you have it set here. If at any time you want to restore defaults back to how they were when you installed the program before you messed with any of the settings, you can click the Restore Defaults button. And that concludes this lesson. If you have any more questions regarding Anime Studio, please check out the official Anime Studio website at anime.smithmicro.com. Thanks for watching, guys. I have many more Anime Studio 9 tutorials out there, so check them out, and I'll see you then.